Hello, my name is Nils with learn to diy and in today's video I'm going to be comparing a Mac versus a PC for video editing. Alright, to set the stage a little bit here, it doesn't matter if you're more of a Windows person or a Mac person, we're going to kind of chuck that out and we're looking at three things here. First, we're going to look at the performance. When you're rendering a video, for example, what does the render time look like? Um, what kind of performance are we actually getting out of the hardware itself? Second, we're going to look at the experience while you're editing because that's, of course, really important. If you're spending hours a day or even just hours a week editing, then it's important to make sure that you're getting an experience that's enjoyable, that's smooth, and it's not glitchy. So we're going to look at that as well. And then the third thing we're going to look at is budget what kind of PC versus Mac can you get for the same budget? So those are the three things we'll compare and let's see how this comes out regardless of whether we prefer Windows or Mac. All right, let's start testing some performance. We're gonna look at some rendering performance to kick us off here. So to level the playing field, everything that is being run on these tests is running off the solid state drives from inside each of these machines. Also on both machines, I have recently restarted the machine and the only thing open is Adobe Premiere. The only thing I've got running is this little timer here on the PC, which you can see. And we'll let that run the whole time to give a kind of accurate representation of what's happening on both these machines at the same time and we'll put them head to head and see how it goes. Now the first test we're going to run is a really simple one. We're going to do a 5 minute 1080p clip. I'm not going to do any effects, I'm not going to do any editing, I'm just going to take that 5 minute clip in Premiere and say go ahead and render this out to a 1080p clip. Let's see how it does. So I try to click both of these to start at the same time and you'll notice here pretty quickly we have a timeline on the Mac that's actually quite a bit longer than on the PC. So as you can see here, the Mac rendered that in 6 minutes and 30 seconds and the PC 3 minutes and 30 seconds. So that means that the PC was 86% faster than the Mac on running 5 minutes of 1080p video. Next up, we're going to run a baseline test for 4K video. So this is just going to be a simple, straightforward 5 minutes of 4K video. Let it render. No effects, no cuts, nothing. Okay, so our PC is done now with 9 minutes and 55 seconds. And the Mac finishes at 20 minutes and 16 seconds. So again, just 5 minutes of 4K video. The PC was actually faster by 104%. So now we're going to take it up another notch and we're going to throw in some filters and we're also going to reverse the last minute of the video and give the processor something to fight against a little bit here. So we're going to apply two different filters across the entire segment and then we're going to take that last minute and reverse it and have it do reverse speed at 100%. Alright, so we've just hit the 15 minute and 1 second mark and the PC is now complete. So 1501 for the PC. And the Mac finishes up at 48 minutes and 31 seconds, so definitely a ways behind. Alright, so that means the PC in this case really showed up. This was 320% faster than what the Mac could render the same video in. Now for our final test, we're really going to put it through its rigors. Basically, we've got another 5 minutes of 4K video. We've got everything we did in test 3. So we've got the last minute reversed, two filters on the whole thing. Then we've taken a separate 4K video and put it up in the top corner. We've rendered that at 50%. We're also putting a spherize filter on that which kind of distorts everything and we're adding the two filters to it. Then we're going to take another 4K video, put it down in the bottom left corner. We're going to run a warp filter which creates these little waves all throughout the video. So a little bit intensive for the processing here. Again, two filters on that. Then later on we're going to actually add a fourth 4K video and put that over on the other side and that one's just going to have two filters on it and we'll run that one at 50% as well and all of these will be on top of our original one that we did in test 3. Now for this I'm using a time lapse because I didn't want to let my computer run for what could be hours and here we see that on the timer it looks like the PC is finishing up at 45 minutes. Okay, so 45 minutes on the clock for the PC and then the Mac is still going and we get 167 minutes or 2 hours and 47 minutes for the PC. So definitely a big time difference there. Uh, that equals 370% faster for the PC than the Mac. So the next thing we want to take a look at is actual usage. So when we're scrubbing in timeline, when we're dragging and dropping clips, uh, when we're applying filters real time and doing real time playback, what kind of results do we get in there? Because that's where we're going to spend the bulk of our time and that's where we'll either get frustrated or be alright with that system. Any latency, any uh, dragging, any buffering, those sorts of things, 
they are really gonna slow us down in this area. So this is one I think that's pretty crucial. What's your actual editing performance while you're editing? All right, so we're gonna start by watching some editing process and some playback on the same footage that we just worked with in test four of that first set of tests for rendering. So on the PC here, if I start to play this back real time in the timeline, you'll see that it just it can't quite keep up. It'll do fine for a little bit, but then it's gonna start to get behind. So the audio will continue, the video will fall behind. And so that's common and that's something that you're gonna see when it just can't handle the throughput of that many pixels on the screen and the processing on top of it. So if I go to more of a normal um, situation where I've got some 4K video, I'm not using proxy media again, and I'm just letting it run, and then I cut from one to the other, maybe add a filter here and there, it actually handles this pretty smoothly. Once in a while, it will start to get behind, and I may have to pause it and let it catch up and essentially catch its breath while it buffers for a little bit and then gets out ahead. And so I have to do that from time to time, but I can mostly just work directly with the 4K video, which is so nice because I don't have to worry about proxies. I don't have to worry about the hard drive space while I'm editing. Um, I don't have to go clean things up after or wait for it to create the proxies the first time. So uh, definitely a, a pretty reasonable experience, even with a heavier load like 4K on the PC. Now let's take a look at the Mac and see what kind of experience we have there. So again, trying to play this back, it's, th there's no hope. It just can't handle this kind of thing. There's too much trying to happen in, at once and it's just it's choking. It's just stuck, it's gonna jump around and it's a pretty frustrating experience. So again, we'll, we'll move to a simpler set of files here. So just 4K video here, no filters, um, no multiple layers, anything like that. And even here we're starting to see some, some pretty major struggles and it just, it's, it doesn't get better, and it's just, it's just not keeping up. It doesn't take long at all, so basically that amount of processing power that we have just isn't sufficient to real-time edit any 4K. So again, in this category, I have to say the PC is just a much more capable machine when it comes to editing um, and that experience that you have while editing. I always encourage you, if you're having any smoothness issues or playback issues while editing, to use proxy media, but if you don't have to, man, that's just that much easier and it's that much nicer to work with. All right, now our third section that we need to look at is the value. What is the bang for your buck that you're getting with a PC versus a Mac? And you may have guessed here, I'm definitely gonna lean towards the side of the PC being a much better value. For the amount that you pay, you're gonna get a lot more out of it than what you do with a Mac or an Apple computer. Let's take a look at the hardware of these two machines and you'll see what I mean. It's really not much of a contest because Mac charges a premium for their stuff and it's good stuff, but you're not getting as much when it comes to video editing. Now, if we see the prices here, you can see that I paid $26.99 for the Mac and I paid less than $2,700 for the PC, so I could actually still add a few more things or upgrade some different things and still be in that same price range as the Mac and have so much of a better experience. One other thing I need to point out here is that I was able to add, because this is a desktop computer, I was able to add eight terabytes of storage as um, internal SATA drives, and it cost me $226, and that's something you just can't do with a MacBook Pro, for example. Even with a Mac Pro or with the largest versions of Macs that you can get, um, they make it a lot more difficult because they're still trying to make everything super compact and look really beautiful, which it does, but it really makes it hard to upgrade the same way you can with the PC. So I have to give a huge shout out to Regal Computers. Regal Computers actually provided this PC for me at no charge, and the idea was we would take a look at this, and he knew that I was an Apple guy. Chris at uh, Regal Computers knew that I was an Apple guy and have always edited with the Apple computers. And so he said, try this PC, I'm gonna build you a custom one. It's kind of a middle range one to handle 4K, but it's not one of my top of the line machines. So he can do even nicer stuff, or they can. And so I tried this out, and as soon as I tried it out, got all my peripherals set up, there was no question. You saw the results. Uh, this PC can really handle so much better the video editing process than a Mac can. So I've been using this computer for about a year now. This isn't something I just tried out in the last couple days and, and uh, gave it a quick shot, but this is my regular go-to daily editor that I use every time I edit my 4K YouTube videos. So this is a pretty great machine. I definitely recommend it. If you're looking for a great machine that's built by a company that builds video editing rigs, then check out Regal Computers at regalcomputers.com. 
I've also put in the description links to some of the hardware that I use and any other things that I've mentioned in this video. And just as a caveat, those are affiliate links um, through Amazon mostly. That means that you pay the exact same that you would any other time, but I get a small commission on each of those purchases. So feel free to use those links if you wanna help out my channel. If you've got any questions or anything like that, leave them in the comments below. Don't necessarily want a PC, Mac, uh, flame war thing going on like that, but I was just trying to look at the facts here and see, and really in all three categories, the PC wins when it comes to video editing. So thanks for watching. I'm Nils with Learn to DIY. Feel free to check out. I've got dozens of other videos on the channel, mostly around how-to projects and home improvements and woodworking and things like that. You can also follow me at Learn to DIY on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And I post a lot more regularly there to show kind of what I'm up to in between doing videos. And if you've got any questions or anything, leave them in the comments below. Like us if you want to. Hit that little bell if you want to keep up to date with the most recent stuff, and we'll see you guys on the next video.